I've had a few questions and comments about this. So this is my How I Hold My Pencils, Pens and Brushes grip tutorial. So first up is a regular pencil. And how I start with this is a mid-barrel grip. So I'm holding it halfway up the pencil. And that will give me a nice loose and light drawing to start with. Nothing too heavy, nothing too detailed, just nice and loose. And after doing my initial sketching using the mid-barrel grip, I changed to the tip grip, which is me holding the pencil, as you can see, you know, just up from the tip. And this is going to give me a lot more control. I'm able to press down probably a little bit harder with the lines and also get a greater level of detail just because I've got a greater level of control. And I use exactly the same kind of approach with a mechanical pencil. The mechanical pencils I like to use have got a, quite a fine tip anyway, uh, but the mid-barrel gives me this loose kind of expressive kind of drawing. And then once I change to the tip grip and I'm holding it much closer to the actual tip, I get a lot more control and I can get, you know, a lot more detail and, you know, care and sort of refinement. Next up is showing you how I use a fine line pen. Now, I, I don't usually use a fine line pen by holding it in the sort of the mid-barrel kind of grip. It gives you these kind of loose kind of lines, which might be good for things like seaweed or maybe sort of like princess dresses. Uh, but most of the time, I hold it in the tip grip. So I'm looking for that nice, uh, uniform kind of line, good control when I'm using a fine line pen. Uh, so here you go. You can see me drawing these little circles here. Perhaps I need to practice them a little bit more. Um, when I'm using the brush pen, I hardly ever use that mid-barrel grip. That would give me a very, lots of lines, you know, quite a lack of control. Uh, might be a, a good loose thing for me to try sometime, but as you can see here, when I'm holding the brush pen, I'm holding it quite close to the tip. Uh, I'm trying to get a roughly uniform line with these circles, but I'm always going for control with the brush pen. But I find it's not just about where you grip the pen, pencil, or brush. It's also about how you rest your hand. So what I tend to do, and what I'll point out here, is the fact that I rest that big fat part of my hand there, usually on the paper, and also perhaps my small fingers, my little finger and the one right next to it. And that gives me a kind of really nice kind of brace, a kind of frame, a kind of support to allow me to do these really delicate kind of lines and very controlled lines with the pencil or a variety of media. If you notice, I haven't really picked up my hand much and I rest my hand on the paper to give me that support and control to allow me to sort of pivot uh, and kind of like move my hand up, down or left and right around that point that I'm resting on the paper. And this is perhaps much more useful when you're using the brush pen because you want to get those super fine lines and you know nice hatch lines so here I am resting my hand on the paper and just sort of flicking my hand gently, you know, up or down or left and right. So the only part of my hand that's moving is the bit that is holding the actual brush pen tip. The rest of my hand is trying to stay pretty static, just lying on the table as I sort of like pivot around that point. And that's what gives me the control with the brush pen that a few of you have asked about, a few of you have noted. One bit of advice that I'd give that I don't particularly show here is usually when I'm doing this, I've already penciled out the design and all of this putting your hand on the paper and you know perhaps moving your hand left and right could smudge your pencil work. So what I tend to do is when I'm using this and I'm using this kind of level of control in a picture, I'll put a piece of rough paper underneath my hand so that I can't smudge the work that's underneath, the pencil work that's underneath, or in some cases the paint, or in some cases the ink work. Um, but that's usually why I work from left to right and top to bottom, so I can't smudge stuff that hasn't dried yet. So the best thing is these grips can be used with paintbrushes as well. So here you can see me using a paintbrush with the mid-barrel grip, and that gives you a nice loose kind of unfussy approach to painting. Um, but obviously because the, the brush is coming in at an angle, the entire brush can leave a different sort of set of marks on your paper than what you can see me doing now, where I've switched to holding the paintbrush on the ferrule, the metal bit, so I'm, it's a tip grip basically, so I'm getting a lot more control, so I can really be fussy about the edges of this circle that I'm doing and the brush marks and the brush strokes that I'm doing. Now this grip is a bit more experimental and I've seen artists on YouTube using um, Chinese or Japanese brushes holding the brush almost at the very opposite tip as you can see I'm trying to do here and doing these lovely flower pictures with using very deliberate and very slow kind of drawn out strokes. Uh, and this is not an effect that I have really used at all yet but it's something that I do want to have a go at using so I'm just 
basically doing it as a demonstration here as an idea and you know you might already be familiar with this so you could leave a comment below telling me how badly I'm doing it but it just goes to show that whatever grip you decide to use when you're um, painting drawing or whatever it's whatever works for you and this is what works for me as I'm going to show now I'm moving my fingers all the way down I'm doing the same kind of thing with the tip grip and it just shows that it can be done pretty much exactly the same the only difference is the amount of paint that's on the brush but it's whatever grip works for you and I think what you need to do is experiment in a sketchbook on a piece of paper or whatever and find out the best way to get the results you want with the pencils and the pens and the brushes. So I hope this tutorial was uh, helpful to you. Um, if you've got any ideas about it or any comments please leave them below and share and subscribe and you might want to check out my previous video where I show you some of the tips and techniques that are demonstrated in this video in a much more kind of real world application where I'm actually doing a picture of a flower using those kind of techniques. Thanks for watching.